Today we have the lovely opportunity to speak to Olympian dietitians Wenda Nell and Ioane van Dijk, who represented South Africa in the Tokyo 2021 Olympics in 400 meter hurdles as well as javelin. Both of them are also registered dietitians and we got to know them just a bit better. Tune in, grab a cup of coffee and enjoy the discussion. Wenda Nell grew up in Wooster in the Western Cape where she matriculated at Wooster Gymnasium High School. She then moved to Pretoria to study dietetics at the University of Pretoria, Tux. She's a qualified dietitian but not currently practicing full time. In addition to that, she's a professional track athlete specializing in 400 meter hurdles. She enjoys being active and at various different sports throughout her school years. Athletics, netball, tennis, swimming, hockey, ballet and modern dancing, but athletics was the one that stuck. She sees herself as honored to have represented South Africa at several major competitions including two Olympic Games, Rio 2016 and Tokyo 2020, that became 2021. Three Senior World Championships, five Senior African Championships, two Commonwealth Games, etc. Her biggest achievements in her sporting career has been a two times Olympian, 2016 and 2020, Commonwealth Games bronze medalist in 2018, two times African Championship and nine times National Championship. Her hobbies are running, cooking and baking. She's an absolute foodie, enjoying a cup of coffee with family or friends, or having a lacquer braai, reading, listening to music and watching movies. She's happily married for nine years to Jock now. She enjoys spending quality time together, just having a cup of coffee, traveling, watching a movie, sitting around the fire. Johan A. van Dijk is currently a community service dietitian at Vitran Psychiatric Hospital. She graduated with the BSc Dietetics degree from the Northwest University of Potchefstroom in 2020. She is currently also finishing her postgraduate diploma in business management at the Northwest University. At Vitran, she is a part of a multidisciplinary team that have monthly discussions regarding intellectually disabled patients in her allocated chronic ward. She is also responsible for daily follow-up in the emergency unit, as well as weekly follow-ups with allocated patients in the frail care unit. She gives nutrition education to outside patients on referral, but different nutritional topic talks are given on a weekly basis at the psychiatric wards of Vitran. She is especially interested in sports nutrition as well as working with nutrition and movement in children. UNA is also a South African javelin thrower and has represented the country at various international events. Her biggest sports achievements since finishing school include being a silver medalist at the World Junior Championships, a Junior African Champion, two-time Senior African Championship silver medalist, two times Universaid Games finalist, silver medalist at the African Games, national champion in 2021, and part of Team South Africa at the Tokyo Olympic Games 2020, which became 2021. In her free time, she likes to stay active by hiking, swimming, cycling, running, and spending time with socializing with friends, that she also would consider a hobby. What made you decide to study dietetics? Maybe I'll start with you, Wenda. What made you decide to study dietetics? The first thing that comes to mind is food. <laughs> um, yeah, I think also the sports nutrition part of it. Um, I remember when I was in high school wondering what I want to be one day. Um, yeah, it's the one thing that I've found that I can link to my sport eventually. And yeah, so that's actually how it started. But yeah. Those do the food and incorporating it with my sport eventually. Was it similar for you, you and I? What made um, you? Yeah, it's, 
Uh, yes, yeah, so for me it was, um, I was maybe around grade 10 or 11 and I started um, thinking uh, like um, a lot about food and also like nutrition and um, how, um, because actually I, I was at a stage in my life where I didn't think I can eat enough or it was like I need to train much more to Eat, uh, deserve the food that I can eat so not that I had, had a problem but it was kind of I had an obsession with it and then I started reading up about it a lot more and then yeah, you know, when I uh, had to decide what I wanted to study I saw okay well it's actually something where it's food based studying so yeah that's how I decided on that it is. How does your nutrition knowledge help you in your experience as an Olympic athlete? Any one of you can jump in first. I'll start. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think for me, in a way, I would like to believe that um, it makes it a little bit easier to understand what the value is of nutrition and how it can add to your performance. So, yeah, I think um, just kind of to incorporate what you know um, and practice, like put it into practice in your own life. Mm -hmm. um, I will always say I can kind of 99% of the time my advice is based on my own experience. Um, mm -hmm. So that's how I, throughout my career as well, I can give advice based on what I've experienced and how I've experimented with foods and how it helped me in specific training mm -hmm. sessions or before competition. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think I, I would like to believe that's how it, it helps me to also you know, to aid in my performance. Very interesting. And for you, you are there? Yes. So um, I agree with Wendy a lot on that one. And I think also um, it's it's quite a big advantage to have the knowledge um, about mm -hmm. nutrition, especially um, in competition. I know one of the the biggest like not rituals I have, but one of the most important preparations before a competition is planning on what time I'm going to eat, what am I going to eat. Mm -hmm. Um, days before and what what's the base nutrition and I think like it's a little bit an advantage above other um, competitors or mm -hmm. not really but other athletes because like it's um, nutrition is one of the most important parts actually also of your competition mm -hmm. so I think it has big effect. say do you enjoy the most of being a dietitian and being an athlete so the two separate but the enjoyment factor of both um i think for me like if i um goes uh, especially just on being a dietitian what uh, to understand the question correctly what is fun for me about being a dietitian yes and then on the part of being an athlete <laughs> Okay, so um, uh, being a dietitian for me, um, I work at a psychiatric hospital, so it's it's much more chronic um, patients, and um, yeah, you know, for me, it's just um, the enjoyment of seeing patients um, improve. For me, that's that's the most satisfying and um, enjoyable for me to see how how they improve and how I can maybe even if it's just a little. Um, something I can add to their day or something that can help them a little more to see see the enjoyment and I mean, just to see improvement. That's, okay. that's rewarding. Yeah. Rewarding, yeah. rewarding. Yeah, I think I would like to add to that. Um, I'm currently not practicing, but remembering back to my practicing days, working in the hospital or seeing clients, um, that reward of the little bit of all the advice that you give that makes a, even if it's just a tiny bit of a difference, but you can see that in the person's life. Um, that's quite kind of fulfills you or just add to that extra enjoyment of being a dietitian. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, for me also just again, the, the, the side of food and just to experiment with that and just also based um, adding to the previous question, um, with the knowledge we have as, as dietitians, 
how we can experiment, what goes with what. Yeah, just to continuously having fun with different things um, and speci specifically adding or yeah, adding that to being a, an athlete, um, I can experiment with, with my knowledge, with food. That's actually the, the major fun part of it. Um, I'm going to jump into the, the second part of the question as well. Um, being an athlete, um, for me, just the fun part of it is I love being active. Um, mm. That's the major side of why I'm I'm an athlete. Um, I've I've been doing athletics my whole life since I can remember. Um, yeah, so it's just that active side of it, being competitive. I like to set goals for myself and and achieve them. Mm. Um, yeah, and. I think as a professional athlete, the, the opportunities we get to, to travel and see the world, that's a big part of the enjoyment <laughs> of mm -hmm. being an athlete. Um, but yeah, I think in, in a nutshell, that's more or less what I would say. Yeah, and you, you wanna, in terms of enjoying what you enjoy about being an athlete? Um, yeah, for me also, like when I said, like traveling and for me also see, seeing new places, but also, for me, it was, uh, or at the moment, is meeting new people and um, making different friends and, you know, just, um, you know, making new friends. And also, like, the exercise part is obviously a big part of it, um, staying active. Not, but I think, like, all athletes will always stay active. doesn't matter if they <laughs> compete or not anymore. Um, but, yeah, I think also setting goals um, every year, um, something new this new challenges. Mm -hmm. um, so. so I'm attending the Olympics 2021. For me, I will say, well, the first answer is just to to have been able to compete. Mm -hmm. I mean, for so long we were uncertain, will it take place? Will we, will, will we be able to have the opportunity to qualify for the games? Um, so yeah, that's kind of my first thought that comes to mind. And with all different setbacks, I mean, every athlete has a story and a journey towards these major competitions um, that we don't always know about. Um, yeah, so for me, for example, I had one or two niggles, small, um, small injuries, in the past two years so that contributed to uncertainties um so yeah definitely just to be able that moment that you walked onto the track and you realized okay it took place i am here i'm an mm -hmm. olympian um, it's an incredible honor and privilege to actually compete there and i think this year's olympic games um, it was my second one so i had something to compare it with but the, something that i've enjoyed a little bit more this time is actually um, I've met a lot of new people, even just in the South African team. Um, I was fortunate to sh share a flat with UNA, and I think our little um, female group there in the flat was just, it was so incredible for me. Yeah. We had amazing chats, we had fun, and um, so often we can, you experience that it, it can be quite tense and um, like, not dramatic, but everyone's focused, and it's not that we weren't, <laughs> but um, yeah, I think it's important to also experience the fun part of the games. So yeah, that was just in short what I would say. <laughs> no, definitely, I agree with uh, Wayne on that one. I think our, our apartment was a uh, very diverse but um, very fun, fun apartment. We had lots of different sports, um, so it was cool to hear from other sports and you know sharing with different kind of people that you wouldn't normally. Um, like share a conversation with. I think if the situation was different, you would have been maybe out out and about a lot more than having to stay. And I think that, yeah, like I said, the whole South African team actually bonded a lot more also. Um, but yeah, for me it was my first Olympic game. So obviously <laughs> that in itself is is <laughs> the biggest uh, and um yeah also living amongst I mean world class some of the best athletes in the world that was also for me very cool I and mean, going to the dining hall and <laughs> sitting across a, a world-class athlete that you usually just see on Instagram or um, like social media and here they are in live person or even talking to one of them I mean mm -hmm. for me that was that was quite awesome. 
That's very exciting. Tell me, who did you share a, a flat with? Or is that information that we're not allowed to know? No, no I'm, I'm sure we, we can say. <laughs> um, Yona, you can, you can just cut in if I forget anyone, but I shared with Bridget Hartley. Um, she's a mm -hmm. canoeist. Um, then Yona shared with um, Bianca, the uh -huh. surfer. Mm -hmm. um, then we had two triathletes, um, Gillian and what, Simone. What's her name? Simone, Simone yes. Yeah. Oh. And then Monique Scott. She's a um, 5,000, 10,000 athlete. Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting. And tell me, um, Ioana, I'm now very curious, who was the athlete that you only saw on Instagram and that you spoke to? <laughs> it was actually funny, Wayne, right? I would remember. <laughs> so it was, there's also a, a Canadian javelin thrower. And um, and the one morning we went to take our picture with all our equipment, because we had a team picture with all our equipment that was in the room. So we had the javelins and the <laughs> And the surfing board and the cycles and everything. And then um, I saw her from a distance and I, I knew I knew her, I felt, but I know she didn't know I was because she's an older javelin thrower already. And I, I knew okay, I had my javelins with me, so she'll know I'm a javelin thrower as well. And mm. then like we walked up and she said to me, Hi, I see you're a javelin thrower. And and I was like, Yes. And she was like, I'm Les, by the way. And I was like, yes, I know you're from Instagram. <laughs> and then I was so embarrassed. I didn't know what to say further. But then later on, we, like, we met again. And I told her, listen, I'm so embarrassed about the situation. But I was a little uh, starstruck. Not starstruck but I, was like, I didn't know how to handle the situation because I was like, I know you are. I know you don't know who I am. So, yeah, that was, that was quite interesting and funny. But, um, yeah, so. Amazing experiences. Sometimes it's these things that you'll think back to for, for the rest of your life. So yeah. thank you for that. Um, uh, you alluded to this, Yuan when you said you think that people will remain active um, as athletes. But I think, do you have any advice on how to find balance between work and sports? So for other dietitians, um, how do they incorporate exercises as a part of their daily routine? Maybe not on a professional level, but just to be active in general. So question to both of you, um, what advice would you give dietitians? Or the public, for that matter. <laughs> um, yeah, I think a, a question like that is is often um, difficult to answer. Um, specific, or oh, let me explain like this: for a professional athlete, it's actually quite difficult to answer because of my opinion, mm -hmm. um, because I think exercise for me specifically is it's my job so it's part mm -hmm. of my lifestyle anyway um, mm -hmm. I'm not doing it just for fun although it is fun but mm -hmm. it's my job and, and it has been for so many years but I think I mean it's also something I'm moving towards retirement so I will definitely mm -hmm. step out of the professional part of it and I would like to believe I, I will stay active um so for now, it's, it might be easy for me to say, no, just do it. It's not that difficult. Just get up in the morning. But I mean, like I say, it's my job. So I, I do it anyway. So we'll see. it will be interesting to see when I retire, if I still have that drive and passion to get, get up. But um, yeah, I think if I can give a small bit of advice um, that I would like to apply to myself, um, try to find a why you want to do it. Um, so if you, it doesn't have to be a professional athlete or sports person, like just for general public. I think for me, it has always helped to um, set goals in life. And mm -hmm. as I achieve them, then I set a new one. So I think that can be quite similar for, for being active for exercise as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think my husband is also quite an active person, but he's not a professional athlete. And I've seen in his uh, life as well that, if there's no major event or competition or um, road race or trail running event or anything that he um, 
have, has entered for, then it's difficult for him to actually find purpose to train. So if those events are there, then he knows, okay, in three months time, I'm doing the Ironman or I'm doing that or doing this mountain race or whatever. So it's, it makes it a little bit easier to, to then um, exercise because you know you are training for something and you don't really want to, I don't know, like half die when you do the event. You, you want to be a little bit fit. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think just try and con on a continuous basis, try to challenge yourself. Um, mm -hmm. Even if it's just personal, I want to, in one month's time, I want to do a two kilometer time trial in this time or mm -hmm. whatever, and then take that month to train for that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so yeah, that will be nice. <laughs> Very good advice. And you, you and A? Yeah, I agree. I definitely agree with um, Wayne on that one. I always thought ugh, people that say they can't train after work, they are lying because it's so easy. You have time. What else are you going to do? Or thought, no, I just get up in the morning. It's fun. Um, until I also started with my internship. And afterwards, I was like, I can't. I mean, there was such a long day. And I mean, if it wasn't for that, I had to train for something. It was, I would have maybe easily skip a day or two if I'm really tired and I think the problem is if you start skipping once then it's so easy just to, to skip again so I think like when I said like set set goals something you want to achieve I think that is that would help and also like get a routine for me that is that's what, what saves me between athletics and working and so for me that's like get a routine and stick to it um, because I think as soon as you have a routine it's going it's easier it's not not that hard work but just starting I think um, is the biggest challenge but I think if you if you set a goal and you start and you are in routine I think it's, it's, a, it's a lot easier so yeah. <laughs>
um, like in a routine when it comes to my nutrition as well and my meals before competition. Um, day after I will experiment a little bit more, but yeah, the, the week or two before the competition, um, I will kind of stick to what I know, what I'm familiar with. Um, and like she said, it, it, it's quite easy to, to um, yeah, just to stick to your portion sizes. It's not that they like make just big portion sizes or yeah, you can kind of dish up or you can ask for an extra chicken breast or whatever the case may be. But yeah, in general, I think they cater just for, for all the needs. Um, mm -hmm. Even gluten-free, there's a gluten-free station. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think. Yeah, and then the coffee, obviously. We just, <laughs> that, that was the best, the coffee station. But yeah, I, I would say in general, it, it is quite easy to stick to your nutritional needs, um, to what you are used to. But I've also, from, ex from past experiences, I've found that sometimes it can also be very overwhelming that without you noticing, you um, can dish up extra things that, oh, I just want to try this. Oh, I just want to taste this. Mm -hmm. um, and then sometimes it can happen that you, I don't know, just consume a bit more than you should or mm -hmm. would have liked to. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, over the years, for me personally, I've I found my routine and my mm -hmm. go-to things that I like to eat. So yeah, it's it's quite quite easy to to still get your proper nutrition. Yeah. With this in comparison to the previous Olympics, uh, was was it different in terms of the, I, I know that it's different countries that hosted, but from your experience, in terms of the food, was that an aspect that was different or was it roughly the same? For me, it was roughly the same. Um, that's also a very interesting um, thing. Like the, in the first few days when we arrived in, in Tokyo, um, some of the athletes or people that's been to Rio as well, the food, actually, the food topic came up, came up quite quickly. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, in Rio, we had this, yeah, we have this. It's not that I can't remember, but like I said, I'm actually easily pleased. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I eat everything. So mm -hmm. I had from my, yeah, what I can remember, Rio was incredible as well. And mm -hmm. um, the one thing that I actually missed in Tokyo, but, I understand it was due to COVID that they couldn't have that. Um, we had a lot more casual places, casual dining places mm -hmm. in Rio, like barbecue stations outside where you mm -hmm. just make like a quick, nice wrap for yourself or uh, on the go sandwich or something like that. They didn't have really have something like that. They had a small casual dining um, area also inside, but yeah, in, in general, that's with the with the aspect um, to the food. That's the biggest difference that I I can remember. Yeah. Okay. What does it take to be an athlete to compete at Olympic level? Like, what do your training set schedules look like? Anyone can jump in. I would like to say that I think we should arrange a, se a, a separate interview for a question like this because it can, can be quite dense. Oh, <laughs> topic. <laughs> yeah, it's a topic on its own. But... Um, yeah, I think let me just fall fall away with some thoughts. Um, I think for me, it will always start at something or the word passion. I mean, mm -hmm. if you don't have passion for something, then then it doesn't help. Or yeah, you, you must have a why you want to do something or why um, you want to achieve something or why you want to be in that specific sport or profession or whatever you set out for yourself. Um, so yeah, definitely, yeah, you need to have a why, otherwise mm -hmm. it's just gonna tumble down. Um, and I think for me, for me personally, a lot of patience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, there's so many, yeah, especially this year, mental health, um, the mental health aspect came up quite a lot. Um, so linked to that in sport, there's so many setbacks and there's actually a lot of, a lot more, don't really want to call it failures but in a in an athlete's eye 
or in your mind not achieving your specific goal you see yourself or your um, performance as a failure so there's a lot more more of that than there's actually um, moments of success or moments of achieving your goals but for me that's that even if it's just that one moment of success or one mo moment in your whole career that you've achieved your major goal it's all worth it if that makes sense it's all it, it kind of outweigh all the failures you had over the years so um that's what I mean also with patience. I mean, you have to have patience with yourself because if just after a month or two or one season, something doesn't go your way and you decide, oh, this is not for me. Maybe it's not for you. You can find something else, but you have to have determination and patience to kind of just continue because you need to know maybe in three years time or five years time, um, you might achieve that specific goal. Um, and unfortunately, something that I think I did not... Uh, or a quality that I should have maybe um, explored or that's not the right word, but um, lived out a bit more is selfishness. Unfortunately, as a professional, especially in individual sport, um, mm. to be a, a professional athlete, I think one should from time to time be a little bit selfish um, with regards to not saying being a mean person or <laughs> rude to people, um, just when it comes to your time, um, your your planning, um, things like that. Um, unfortunately, family, friends, they don't always understand why you can't attend certain things or can't go away on holiday or you can't come back from overseas for this event. Um, they, they don't understand and they try to. And I have, um, I also kind of, um, how can I say? Um, now I don't have the right word, but I'll, I'll get to it. Um, I understand why they, they, they don't understand, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, it's difficult to ex explain. It's difficult to really let or to make someone understand why you make certain choices. Or, I mean, in life, people will always want to tell you kind of how to live. And they want you to, to live out their dream for you, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, so often, especially the people closest to you, they they live your dream with you to a point where they actually want to live, want you to live it their way. Um, mm -hmm. And it's it's difficult. It's difficult sometimes. You are still the one. You are the athlete that needs to perform. You're the you're the one that needs to travel and compete at this high level under the pressure. Um, at the end of the day, I mean, they are not the ones that. Um, yeah, I was actually doing it. So I will often say, just just support me. It's 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 okay. I I make my decisions. Sometimes pays pays off. Other times not. Um, and especially after this Olympics, we also I had quite a lot of discussions with with people that I mean Olympic Games. It's especially Olympic Games. I mean the world is seeing it as the the biggest sporting event in the world. Mm -hmm. So every professional sports person would love to participate there or, or achieve the qualification to to be part of your country's team to to call himself an olympian um but yeah at the end of the day for the world olympics is it's entertainment so it's easy to give comments to yeah say ah oh, that, that athlete has uh, faded or didn't perform or but they don't know everything behind the scenes that that athlete needs to endure to actually get there. It's, it's our jobs. Mm -hmm. So for us, being at something like the Olympic Games is actually very daunting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you have to, um, or, or you want to achieve a goal that you've set out for yourself. You're not there to play or just party there or whatever you are there to actually compete you want to be competitive um so at the end of the day not achieving what you think out for yourself um is many times heartbreaking and you come back and you're, you're very disappointed where the public sees it as no it's such a great achievement you can call yourself olympian i get that yes but at the end of the day yeah it's it's tough it, it really doesn't 
you don't wake up one morning and the next day you're an Olympian. It, it takes a bit, a bit more than that. Mm. But I encourage everyone to have a dream like that and go for it. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, I no, I think, no, Thank no, you no, for I sharing. <laughs> no, I think Gwena summed it up very well. I mean, she has been in the profession for a long, longer time than I have, but um, I definitely agree with the like the Olympics. Some of my one of my friends told me, um, and it was for me like, wow, that's true. <laughs> she said that the Olympics is the circus, and and we are the entertainers inside the circus, and the whole world, the world is just watching the circus. And for me, that was quite like that's actually true. We are there for the entertainment, and for what what is entertainment for other people is four or five years worth of work and sacrifices I think for me it's um, I'm a very social person but for me it was it's a it's it's the sacrifices of not um, always seeing friends or not always like missing things I think for me if um, competing overseas traveling or you let you really miss a lot of things and you miss a lot of life events and for me also um I live quite far from from where I'm based now, and for me it was choosing javelin or choosing to you know, to be an athlete was not only choosing the sport; it was choosing to leave my home, leaving my family, um, and like missing a lot of things. I mean, like I when I was in university, I only went home like maybe twice a year because in the vacation times we had competitions or we had um, events to go to or I had to train during the vacation so it was you know it's it's a lot of sacrifices that you don't actually think about and until someone asks you okay what what does it mean or what what did you do to um so yeah for me that's like like when I also said it's it's a lot of sacrifices and and a lot of times the people that you love don't understand always like listen I can't come home from vacation um mm -hmm. for a month I can come for two weeks don't ask me why it's only two weeks, I have to train for something that's more important than being on vacation. So um, I think for me also, it's, it's just like sacrifices. And, um. I think so. I just want to add something else that I thought of just now. Um, as a professional athlete, you travel quite a lot. And I think so often people back home, they're like, it's such an amazing life. And you just, you, you can see all these places and, Yes, again, I'm grateful and it is an amazing experience, but so many times you just see the inside of, the, of an hotel and then you go to the track, back to the hotel and the next morning you leave. So it's not that you are there as a tourist or explore and have these weeks and days off that you can explore while you're there. For me, when I'm in, in Europe or traveling the world, it's usually like in high peak Com um, competition season so of course you make time two three days here and there if you if it's possible to see something or just play tourists or whatever but you know it's not these weeks of vacation that you um traveling the world and you just yeah it, it's mm -hmm. not it's still our job we are kind of traveling for our job <laughs> yeah yeah, I think it's interesting that you mentioned that because a while ago I, I thought and, and I said this about um, about athletes, about musicians, about anyone who is in the public eye. If I have a bad day at my job, no one knows about it, where it's like uh, very open and publicized and, and you put yourself out there um, and you know, people can be very mean sometimes and, and luckily we know that the nice people and the people who really love you and who support you outweigh them. And as you say, if you have that why, um, then you can bear, um, it's a quote that I read, I think in Dr. Vink Victor Frankl's book that said, if you have a why, you can bear almost anyhow. Um, and I think that's, that's amazing if you sometimes have that to hold on to. Um, but Thank you for representing our country. Thank you for representing our profession. You made us very proud. Like um, I, I did a meet the dietitian on Wenda a few uh, a few years ago, and then you are now when your name came up, I'm like, I need to find this person. <laughs> I need to um, get hold of them so that we can, as a profession, celebrate 
what you've achieved. Um, and for you being Olympians, we are really glad. And even just for me to have the privilege to speak to you guys today is it's really a, a massive honor. And, and we thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedules to, to have this chat with us um, and uh, inspire our fellow dietitians. Yeah, I, I would like to say thank you for your time and yeah, thinking of doing something like this. And yeah, it's, it's really, um, I'm grateful for the opportunity mm -hmm. um, to sh sh yeah, just share a, th a few thoughts, mm -hmm. tongue twister, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, and I would like to, once I retire, move a bit back into the profession. I'm still kind of using it from day to day and so mm -hmm. forth. But like I said, not not working um, full time currently, but yeah, I would love to continue being a dietitian in the future. Oh. Thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity. Like when I said also. <laughs>